Hi, my name is Pete Hahn, and thank you for watching this tutorial video. Be sure to visit www.hahn-tech.com for the full library of video tutorials. I hope this video increases your knowledge and helps you become more efficient with this topic, whether for home or work. Please support this channel by sharing these videos with your friends and colleagues. Hi guys, welcome to the Sierra Chart Scans Demo Video. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the steps required to configure and run a scan in the Sierra Chart platform. I almost feel like I need to apologize up front because this is going to be a very short video. There's not a whole lot that I can share with you here because there just really isn't very much functionality available in the Sierra Chart scanner. So what we're going to do is basically show you how to create a list of ticker symbols to scan. And there's a few challenges there, so you want to make sure you pay attention to those details. Then we're going to show you how you set up your chart. In this case, we've got a chart of one of our indicators, one of our premium indicators for Sierra Chart. It's a divergence lines indicator. And then we're going to show you how to go ahead and run the scan. And, and we'll also show you some very important information you'll want to consider if you're going to try to run one of these scans. And that is how much disk space does it take on your hard drive and how much time does it take to configure and set up an intraday scan. So let's go ahead and cover the disclaimer first before we get into the details. There's really hardly any reason to do a disclaimer, but we are presenting stock charts here, so I feel it's important to let you guys know that I am not a professional trader. I don't earn my living by trading stocks or teaching people how to trade stocks. I earn my living by writing computer code and teaching people how to get the most out of their technology. I teach. And so I want you guys to understand that there is nothing in this video that can be interpreted as an advertisement or a recommendation to buy or sell any financial instrument. I also want you guys to understand that in trading there is significant risk and that risk is all or more than the amount of money you have deposited in your brokerage account. More you ask? Yes. You can lose more than you have deposited in your brokerage account if you happen to have a short position that gaps up against you. Okay, let's go ahead and get on with the details. The first thing we're going to show you is how to configure your watch list from which your scan will run. The very first step in setting up your scan is to load symbols into what's called an associated watch list. And they have such a thing on Sierra Chart platform, that's what they call it. If you go to chart from the main menu, then you can select associated watch list and that will open up a watch list that is associated with the chart that was active at the time you clicked on it. You can see that I've got a list of stocks loaded in this watch list already. I'll show you another way that you can access the associated watch list. We'll close this and I have it right here attached to the toolbar. Now by default you're probably not going to have this located on the toolbar so let me show you very quickly how you can add that associated watch list to the toolbar. We'll right click and select customize control bar. You can see I've got it listed down here on the right hand side at the very bottom. Anything that's listed on the right hand side will not show up on the left hand side. So in order for me to show you how to find it on the left, I'm going to have to remove it from the right. So I click on the remove button and then we'll just scroll down here and we'll go to special items and you can see if I open up special items, that is where you find the watch list item. So then you just go ahead and add it and it shows up here at the bottom and you can move it up or down add separators. You can customize this toolbar. As you can see, I've already done so by adding different time frames and changing the colors of various time frames. So we'll go ahead and click cancel because I don't want to save any changes that I made. So the next step, we're going to show you how to go ahead and access the associated watch list with the chart. Again, you select the chart. This is a five minute chart. And we go to chart from the main menu and we select associated watch list. While we're here, I want to point out that we have an option for starting and stopping a scan. I wanted to point those out because later on when we begin to run a scan, you'll want to make note of where that is located. Okay, so associated watch list. Now I'm going to go ahead and select remove all because I want to show you the import process. I'll click yes, and now we have no more 
tickers in the watch list. Let's go ahead and close this and show you that on the associated watch list that we attach to the toolbar, again, there is nothing there except for the currently plotted symbol on this chart. So this is another way that you can access the associated watch list right here. I'm going to click that and now we're looking at the very same associated watch list that we just cleared the symbols from. Now there's an import button, but I need to show you some of the details there's some technical details that are important, some of which I really can't explain fully. I just, <laughs> I played around with it until I got it to work. So you're going to want to follow these instructions in order to import ticker symbols into your watch list. So we'll go ahead and open up Excel. I've already got a window of Excel open. You can see that I've got a list of ticker symbols. Now, this was exported from a watch list in Thinkorswim's trading platform. So let me explain how we do this. Okay, we've got a text file already open here with a list of ticker symbols. You can scroll down to the very bottom here. You can see it's basically A through C. All the, all the A's, all the B's, all the C's from the watch list. Okay, and what does that represent here on the Excel spreadsheet? Let's go ahead and delete this so that we have an even count here. And let's scroll down until we get to the first D. Okay, so we've got 207 ticker symbols on that list. Now you might say 207 ticker symbols, that's not a whole lot to scan against. Well, when we get to the other part where I show you how much space this uses on your hard drive, you're going to realize that 207 is probably going to be an upper limit. It really does not use memory very well. Sierra Chart is so advanced in its core language. It's based on C++. It's a fully compiled language. It runs so fast and so efficient and yet they do things that are so 1960s. The scanning engine is one of them. I'm sorry guys, I really can't say something good about it. So let me just go ahead and explain to you how to get those ticker symbols into your watch list. So what you would have to do is you would have to go ahead and select and copy from the spreadsheet, copy, and I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new text file. So we go over here and we right click, select new text document, and then we just go ahead and open that text document and then we can right click and paste. Okay. And then what you do is you do a file and a save as, which I'm not going to complete because I've already got this text file already saved and I don't need to save it again, but these are the steps required and you have to copy and paste them out of Excel into a brand new fresh text document and then save it. But that's basically what I've got here. It's called export.txt notepad. Okay, so suffice it to say you understand now the technical requirements of getting your ticker symbols out of Excel into a fresh text document and you realize that you really can't save it from an Excel spreadsheet because that's going to cause some problems. So we'll go ahead and go to Sierra chart and then we'll select import and from import, then we'll select this folder button right here, and that will allow us to browse folders. And I'm going to go to the desktop on this computer and click OK. We're not selecting the file there, we're selecting the folder there. And then it will show you all of the text documents available in that folder. But this is the one that has all of our ticker symbols that we want to import, and we just click Import here, and now you have all 207 of your ticker symbols in there. And now that we have the items loaded in our watch list, we can go ahead and close that. And the next step is to run the scan. Now I'm not going to run the scan here. Instead, I left the screen intentionally at the end of the previous scan so that I can show you the results of the scan without having to run the scan. Why? That is because the first time through, the scan took 40 minutes. And after 207 symbols, I stopped the scan. Why did it take 40 minutes to run a scan on 207 symbols? And that is because every symbol in the list needs to be downloaded from Sierra Chart and saved to your hard drive before it can load it onto a chart before it can run a scan against that ticker symbol. So every single ticker symbol and let me show you this too. So we'll right click on the chart and we'll click chart settings and we'll go ahead and look at this right here. So I've only downloaded 
five days of five minute data for 207 of the ticker symbols. And that's when I stopped the scan because after 40 minutes I realized this is just not a feasible solution. It's just really not going to work. So guys, you're watching this video maybe in hopes of learning how to run scans on Sierra Chart. And really what I'm doing is explaining to you all of the reasons why it's a bad idea. It's just a very poor tool for running scans on stocks. And there's absolutely no way to make it better. I'm sorry. So we'll go ahead and click Cancel here. And to run the scan, you simply click on Chart from the main menu. And remember, I pointed this out earlier. And then you click on Start Scan. Now, if the chart data has already been downloaded to your hard drive, the scan will run much more quickly. And I did. I tested that and the scan ran in about 10 minutes. Now that's 207 ticker symbols and it had to load every single ticker symbol into a chart, check for a signal, load the next symbol, check for a signal and on and on and it went for 10 minutes. And here in this screen you can see the results of the scan out of 207 ticker symbols it picked up five different signals for the Divergence Lines uh, MACDX2 study. So it took about 10 minutes to run through that list of 207 ticker symbols even after all of the data had been downloaded from the server and stored and saved on the hard drive. And guys, I'm running an SSD on this thing. This is no slouch. This is a Samsung 850 EVO solid state drive. So it's not like the hard drive is, is a slow hard drive and holding things back here. So I just wanted you guys to understand that you can run scans in Sierra Chart. You can use our premium indicators that have alerts and you can set the alerts on those indicators and you can run scans against those indicators. However, Sierra Chart simply does not provide a very robust solution for running scans, not in any large numbers of ticker symbols it's really designed to run a scan maybe against you know a couple dozen ticker symbols at most and you're probably better off running it on a daily time frame instead of a five minute time frame or something like that and I think I've shown you enough of the details so you can understand the little components the little thing like only load five days of five minute data you only want to load the minimum amount of data required to build the indicator so this is a MACD you need 104 bars with an exponential MACD in order to be able to compute that correctly. So you've got to have, I think, two and a half days of five minute bars just to run the MACD through its uh, initialized value, its range independent value. So then you have to allow extra to be able to measure divergence signals that span a couple dozen bars. One more thing I wanted to show you guys, I, t I did tell you this, I was going to show you the disk usage. So let's go ahead and bring that up. And what I've got here are just screenshots of the folder where all of those ticker symbols are downloaded and stored on your computer. And you can see that we started off at 2.58 gig, so 2.5 gig. And after I stopped the scan, after 207 symbols, and this is just five days of five minute bars on 207 ticker symbols, it doubled the amount of space I was using in that folder. Five gigabytes of data is now what it's using. So guys, I, I don't really think that it's smart to do scans on Sierra Chart. This will probably be my one and only video that I do for Sierra Chart scans as a topic. And I hope this helps you guys. Uh, if you're struggling and wondering why it's not working or why it's not available, then you should take it up with Sierra Chart and ask them to build something a little bit more robust. So guys, that's all I've got to share with you on this video. There's no code to share with you, no indicator associated with this video. I just wanted to show you guys quickly how to use the, the scanner on the Sierra Chart platform. Okay, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Take care, everyone. Thank you for watching this tutorial video. Be sure to visit www.hondashtech.com for the full library of tutorials. I hope this video increases your knowledge and helps you become more efficient with this topic, whether for home or work. Please support this channel by sharing these videos with your friends and colleagues.
Thanks and take care.